I'm, I'm looking at you, Thelma, and I'm thinking about the class that I just taught this past semester uh, on African American art. And we get to that point where P O S T hyphen B L A C K <laughs> comes up, <laughs> and we invoke your name and Glenn Ligons. Mm -hmm. And I want to extend this not just to you, but also to Jack and Holland. And it kind of brings us back to where we started that something happened at the end of the 20th century um, and the beginning of the 21st century, freestyle <laughs> is, is, was an emblematic exhibition. My, my students tell me this, you know, and, and it was. So what happened and how is it that the thing that happened took everybody's imagination? Rick, it's hard for me to have any distance from this particular question, the post-black question, or even this bigger question of artists of African descent. Right? Because I'm a curator who has spent her entire career making exhibitions with black artists. I now am privileged to run an institution whose mission is to present, preserve, collect, and interpret the work of artists of African descent. Right? So this is my full and total reality right? all the time. Right? I live in a world at which this is the center, the only one. And I am in the center of that center, right? So, it's so, true, for it's true. Reason, so for that reason, you yeah. know, I come at this, yeah. you know, very differently than perhaps looking at it from the outside. So, what I'll say about that moment is I don't know if there was a need to think about that moment specifically, but I knew it needed to happen. That is, it was both personal and institutional. Personally, I had the privilege of working with a group of artists in the 90s that redefined the space for black artists in the art world. I really was just an active co-conspirator with them, but they were doing that. And you talked about collecting before. You know, I have to say as a curator, often one's work gets marked through this kind of lineage of exhibitions. But I actually think, and it's again what we see here in the gallery, so as a curator in an institution that collects, your legacy is really in what you can make happen in that collection. Right? And that's something I felt certainly when the Whitney reopened and I walked into that room with the David Hammonds, the Lorna Simpson, the Fred Wilson, the Jimmy Durham, and I could keep going, right? I could, I, I could see what was 10 years of active engagement and thinking about, right? Collecting in a very active way. So freestyle happened simply because in 2000, to imagine that there'd be a museum that had been born out of cultural specificity at a very particular moment, 1968. And I'm gonna stop here and give a plug for a book that the Duke University Press has published. And I think the pub date is like the 19th by Susan Kahan mm -hmm. called mm -hmm. Mounting Frustration. Mm -hmm. Let me say, write it down everyone. Yeah. Pre-order on Amazon now. Yep. <laughs> Very important book. Very yep. important book. It felt to me like, has anyone like done their DNA and you get that report and all yeah. of a sudden you know all this stuff about yourself you didn't know? <laughs> I'm serious. That's what reading Mounting Frustration was for me. Like, it made sense of everything I know about myself as a curator in these institutional settings. So, freestyle had to happen simply because it was like the reset button. Like, you know, how, how could a studio museum imagine itself in the 21st century if it wasn't doing the same thing it did in 68, mm -hmm. which was opening up new territory? Mm -hmm. Now, certainly, you know, when I'm opening new territory, a lot of times I'm just opening it for myself, right? It was really a way to think, how can I open some space for a group of artists that needed to be able to, on the one hand, honor the legacy, as Pam has said, this intergenerational legacy, but on another hand, live and step into the world themselves as artists, and that's what... Freestyle was about, that's what Post Black was about, and that's what that moment, I think, opened up and offered some possibility around. Yeah, I was actually, I actually went to that um, show, Harlan on my mind. I wandered into it by, a, almost you by- You wrote about this, no, you wrote a, <laughs> no, Holland wrote about this. Again, Google that, it was a fantastic, you talked about that. Yeah, I did, walking I had that experience, in. walking in not knowing what was going on with that show. I had no idea what it was about. But um, moving ahead, uh, you know, freestyle gave me an opportunity, just, just as Africa Explores gave me an opportunity to do this, freestyle gave me an opportunity to look and see the breadth of work that was being created within a category that I had always, uh, that I had tended to treat rather narrowly. And that was a huge gift to me. My background is in South Asian art, Indian art. That's where I was doing my graduate work in. So I was already coming from someplace that wasn't New York centric or, or even Western centric. And um, so, 
Freestyle just opened that possibility for me, and I was very, very grateful, and I went for it. Uh, in my career, I, t I find myself tending to go for content in art. <laughs> I, I look for it, and I, it, it's what moves me. And when I find art that's being made under what I perceive as some kind of pressure, that particularly moves me. That art really interests me a lot. And um, that's what I found in that show. You know, this could go on and on, but, um, I, but it can't. <laughs> so thank you, Franklin Sermons, Pamela Joyner, Jack Shainman, Colin Carter, and Thelma Golden. Thank you so much.